Gang, Dirty Rob from Exalt Sports, Dirty Herd, and the West Michigan Trail Runners here with this week's shoe review. You already know what shoe I'm going to talk about. You click the link to see the video. It's the Stinson 8CR3 from Hoka 1-1. Brand new update for one of their maximal, maximal trail shoes. Uh, and this is a very nice update from them. Night and day from the previous versions, I think. Uh, and really, all they've done is change the upper. Midsole outsole is basically the same. Uh, it's awesome, but it's the same. So let's talk about what they did to the shoe that's, we'll start with what they, what's not changed and what we all know is in a Hoka, in case you haven't seen a Hoka video before or tried on the shoe or read about them. Uh, they are the maximal leaders in the industry. They make a shoe that's anywhere from one and a half to two and a half times thicker than the average sole uh, of any running shoe, road or trail. This particular version, being a trail shoe, has three millimeter lugs in the bottom, so that makes it a little more durable. It gives you a little bit of traction for the, you know, the dirt and gravel and et cetera. Um, this particular version has their late stage meta rocker versus some of their early stage meta rocker. And all it means is this, this toe spring curvature moves a little further forward so you get your more, much more broad, stable base uh, under your foot for those kind of off kilter landings. Some of the road shoes then, if you ever read about their early stage meta rocker, that curvature point moves back behind the metatarsals so it gives you a little zippier ride and you feel a little quicker into your stride. And they do that because the shoe is so thick that you just can't flex the thing. So you just, you can't run it so much as it runs you if that makes sense um stack heights in this questionable i read n lots of different numbers i never got a square answer on how high the shoe was in the forefoot and heel everyone though agrees it's a six millimeter drop so it is in that kind of minimal category as far as drop goes where it's 12 standard a little lower there but the stack heights in the heel just to give you an idea of the numbers i've read anywhere from 32 millimeters to 41 millimeters in the heel i don't know what that exact number is but I can promise you, the Stinson, along with the Mafate, along with the Bondi, those are their three ultra oversized, mac most maximal shoes they make. Uh, so you're getting a lot of shoe here. Weight-wise, a little over 12 ounces for the size nine. My size 14, right here, 14 and a half. So it's not all that heavy, uh, considering some of the other premium cushion neutral road shoes out there are kind of creeping up into the same ballpark. So for a shoe that's massive, you'd think it'd weigh a lot more. It doesn't, it's really light. Let's get to what they did differently though. Uh, it's all in the upper. And again, I don't know exactly what they did. I haven't ripped the shoe apart length of the construction. There's more air mesh through the upper. Lycra comfort frame in the upper now. Uh, they still have the external heel counter here, which is fairly insignificant. Their active uh, support frame, which has you sitting down in the midsole uh, a little more than an average shoe, really controls you more than this does. But I have to tell you, the comfort of this upper is shockingly different in a good way than the previous version. Um, you run in the old version of the shoe and the framework back around the heel and, and kind of through the midfoot was so, I don't want to say stubborn, but so, so rigid that if you caught a, a root or rock and you moved a little funny, uh, the upper didn't really move with you. You would feel kind of a, a jabbing on occasion, depending on how your ankle or your foot moved, that would kind of push and poke at the foot a little. This thing though, unbelievable. Wraps the foot comfortably, moves with the foot, and Still you feel stable and controlled and it ties you to the midsole of the shoe very, very well, which is really what's most important. When you have an outsole like this, where you sit down into it, which is again different than most trail or road shoes for that matter, uh, you have that extra support of that outsole wrapping up around your, your foot. Uh, you don't need that rigid upper like that. So this thing's awesome. Uh, it feels really good. It locked onto the foot nicely. Uh, plenty of room in the forefoot for most people. Again, it's not ultra. A L T R A wide uh, in the forefoot, but it is a very spacious shoe because it's meant to go, you know, the long distance. This shoe's built to run 100 milers or 50 milers, depending on the person. Uh, or for that matter, you know, it's a really great uh, application if you're trying to recover from injury and get active again, or as a recovery day shoe. Uh, Hoka used to claim that the shoes absorb, you know, a certain high number of the percentage of the impact you created. They backed off that claim because I don't think they can prove it quite yet. But if you go to any ultra trail road marathon, you're gonna see a zillion hokas. Proofs in the pudding that they work. They do the job. They do absorb a lot of the impact you create. They do a lot of the work for your foot and your lower leg. And you always feel better afterwards. They let you go longer than you've ever wanted to go. So hoka, a nice update. It looks great. Uh, it feels great. Love what you're doing. Uh, sadly, I don't run too many ultra marathons. So I can't give this shoe the, an esteemed place in the trunk of my car uh, like some others, but 
if I do ever get a little crazier and I ever do start to train for an ultra marathon and run an ultra marathon, this shoe will definitely be on my short list of shoes to try. It's awesome. Uh, I love running in my Hoka's uh, when I do get them in them and more than not, they're usually a road version that I use for recovery runs. And I love the fact that my legs feel fresh afterwards and my feet almost a little bored because the shoe does so much work for you. So Hoka, nice job. Great update here. Keep up the good work. Uh, we love it. So that's it for today, guys. Trail shoe review done for one more week. Uh, stay tuned next week. Hopefully we'll have some cool fall apparel and gear coming our way as the weather starts to change here in West Michigan. So that's it. I appreciate your time. Appreciate your comments. As always, if you have any additional things to say, leave them in the comments below the video. Otherwise, until then, I'm Beardy Rob. I'll see you guys on the trail. Thanks.